Hi there, I'm Tim from Experimental RC, and today in this video I'm going to be showing you how to build and fly your own RC plane completely from scratch. So this is the plane I'm going to be showing you how to build and fly. It is a basic scratch built trainer. I came up with the design and I've gone through several uh, design revisions to get it flying exactly the way a trainer should. And it's really super cheap to build. Uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the build first and then from there I'll show you how to fly it. So the plane itself is made completely out of one sheet of half an inch insulation foam. You can pick up this stuff at a store like Home Depot or Lowe's. And you'll also need a couple other components that you're most likely to have just sitting around the house. When it comes to the airplane's electronics, this is where you will be spending most of your money. The nice thing about the RC hobby though is that the airplanes are quite modular, so you'll be able to reuse all of these components in your next project. I usually buy all my uh, RC parts from Hobby King. Uh, their prices are quite reasonable, but you can also pick this stuff up at a local hobby store. The things you're going to need are a 20 amp brushless motor and speed controller. Uh, the size of the motor isn't too important, it should be rated for about 20 amps though. You're also going to need a propeller for it, I have a 10 by 47 propeller and a prop saver and you are quite likely to break a few propellers so order a couple extras. You're going to need two servos, I like to always upgrade to metal geared servos because they last a lot longer. You'll also need servo push rods and control horns and you'll need a three cell battery. I recommend you get something with a capacity of about 1300 milliamp hours. When it comes to your radio systems, you do have a bit more choice depending on what you're gonna be uh, eventually going into in terms of the hobby. Um, something like this with the larger antenna uses a uh, more traditional uh, frequency range. And the problem with these radios is that if you operate on someone else's channel, then you'll end up uh, flying their plane or or they'll fly yours, so that's kind of an issue. And for that reason, uh, 2.4 gigahertz radio systems, which have these kind of small stubby black antennas, are becoming far more popular. As you can see, my old radio system here has been gathering quite a bit of dust. Now, if you are planning on uh, getting into the hobby quite a bit more, uh, flying more advanced and bigger planes, you might want to spend the money and get something like the Spectrum DX6i over there. However, if you're unlikely to be flying anything more complicated than this plane here, then you can also just pick up a really cheap radio system from Hobby King. Um, I'm going to be using my cheap Hobby King radio for this build just because it's really simple and convenient. Begin by cutting a piece of foam that is 28 inches by 14 inches. I like to use a drywall square to ensure I'm getting nice 90 degree cuts. Next, draw a rectangle with a width of 7 inches. Measure 14 and a half inches down one side of the rectangle and 10 and a half on the other. Draw a diagonal between those two marks and cut out this shape like so. Flip it over and trace and cut an identical counterpart. From the opposite end of the sheet, make a cut 3 feet from the end. Cut 3 pieces of foam from this section that are 3 feet long and 2 inches wide. Next, cut a rectangle that is 12 inches by 3 and a half inches. Round 2 of the corners on this rectangle, then cut another rectangle that is 12 inches by 2 and 3 quarters of an inch. Along one side, mark 4 and a half inches in from either corner, and on the opposite side, mark the center. Cut it into a shape like I have here. You'll need to reinforce the middle section with a piece of metal or wooden dowel, or you could even use a popsicle stick. You might need to cut a small groove for this piece to fit in. Next, cut a bevel at around 40 degrees using a box knife, and this will allow the elevator to pivot against the horizontal stabilizer. Now cut an 8 inch by 8 inch square. Cut a rectangle out of a corner that is 2.5 inches by 3.5 inches. Square off a line like so, 2 inches in from the 3.5 inch cut. Then remove this diagonal as shown and square off another line 4 inches down from the top. Finish off this piece by cutting this off here and rounding the top corner. This is going to be your vertical stabilizer. You can now line up this piece against a corner of scrap foam and trace a rudder shape. Bevel the rudder in the same way you did the elevator. Now cut a 5 inch by 5 inch square. Measure in 1.5 inches from opposite corners, join the two marks and cut along that diagonal. Next you can round these cuts as best you can with your knife, along with the leading edges of the vertical and horizontal stabilizers and the wing.
You can then use a piece of light grit sandpaper wrapped around a block of foam to finish rounding these edges. Next, build a fuselage out of the longer pieces of foam. Hot glue two of them on for the sides so that they are flush with the bottom piece at the front but meet in the middle at the back. Then trim the bottom so it's flush with the sides and glue a scrap piece of foam on the front and trim it as well. You can then use sandpaper to make sure these cuts are all flush. From here we'll put together the wing. Glue the wing tips in place so they have a slight angle, or a tip dihedral, of about 15 degrees. First glue from the top, and after that dries flip the wing over and inject beads of glue into the crack at 1 inch intervals. Then use masking tape to reinforce this joint. Now glue the reinforcement in place on the elevator and use masking tape to create a hinge between the elevator and the horizontal stabilizer. You can also hinge the rudder to the vertical stabilizer. Now glue the extra stabilizers onto the side of the elevator, but instead of gluing them flush with the sides you should actually offset them just a couple degrees to the right. The turning propeller will generate some torque on the aircraft, uh, so offsetting these stabilizers will help to cancel that out. Install the landing gear by cutting a slit a few inches back from the front, covering it in glue, and pushing the gear in place. Now attach the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. I also suggest reinforcing the part of the rudder that will drag on the ground with a piece of uh, wood or metal, just so it doesn't damage the foam. After this, install the control horns, one on either side, the same way you attach the landing gear. Then attach the push rods and the servos, make sure the servos are in their neutral positions at this point, and then glue the servos onto the side of the fuselage so the rudder and elevator are flat. Poke the wires from the servos into the fuselage. Your motor should be mounted to some kind of base plate. Loosen the set screws to remove it, and you can glue this base plate directly to the front of the airplane, however I recommend you glue a piece of wood or something there, and bolt the base plate to it. Then you can reinstall the motor, you can see I drilled holes for the wires of the motor to pass through into the fuselage, and then mount the prop saver and the propeller. You can see that with the prop saver, the propeller can flex if it gets bumped, so you're less likely to damage it in a crash. Plug the motor into the speed controller and fit the battery into the front of the fuselage. Then plug the servo wires into the receiver. Generally, throttle is channel 3, elevator is 2, and your primary turning control, the rudder in this case, is channel 1. Now power up your transmitter and plug the battery into the speed controller. You will need to set up your radio so that pulling back on your right stick moves the elevator up, which makes the plane climb, and the side to side movement of the right stick corresponds to your rudder, which turns the plane. The throttle is controlled by moving your left stick forward, and if you need to reverse the direction your motor turns, you can simply swap two of the three wires going between the speed controller and your motor. Now attach the wing mounts to the fuselage with elastics, install an elastic to hold the battery in place, and put the wing on. Finally, you can check the center of gravity, or the place where the plane balances where you pick it up, and make sure it's approximately one inch behind the wing tips. Once you've done that, you're ready to fly it. So I recommend for your first uh, flight you hand launch it. You can either do this or get someone else to do that. And it's very simple. You just basically put it at about three quarters throttle and toss it gently into the wind at about a 15 to 20 degree angle, just like so. You can also do an underhand uh, hand launch where you hold it. Uh, by the elastic bands and just toss it underhand. It's a little bit more difficult, I think, because you're not starting with the plane quite as high off the ground, uh, but it's the same principle. One other hand launch method is the wing launch. Performing a takeoff from the ground is a bit more difficult. You'll want to point the plane into the wind, give it slightly uh, over three quarters throttle, and when you feel like the plane has got going uh, to an adequate speed, you can pull up with your elevator and I recommend you immediately blast the throttle uh, all the way to 100%.
From there, feel free to climb up to a safe height, back the throttle off to just over half, and then you can trim it out and uh, get it flying level at about three quarters to half throttle. To land, you're gonna wanna bring it around for a fairly wide approach. Uh, try to keep the airspeed down, but don't give it too much down elevator, just cut the throttle. However, be careful you don't stall. Then, just drop her down. It's as simple as that. If you want to get a bit more advanced, you can also have some fun uh, catching it instead of landing on the ground. This is a little bit more challenging and it's also kind of dangerous because you would, you know, cut yourself, so don't sue me. But basically for that, you bring it in for an approach and when you get close, you start to pull up on the throttle quite a bit more. So you're kind of bringing it into a stall and then from there you can catch it. I'll uh, give you a quick example of that now. So I have a lot of space to do this. The plane is down to the ground, flying at just slightly under a quarter throttle. Um, now you can see this would be a perfect uh, landing here, but I'm gonna keep it above the ground. And when it gets close, I'm gonna give it full elevator and then just catch it on the wing like that. So as you can see, it's not hard to fly this plane. It's a lot of fun, it's a great flyer. If you crash, you're not risking a whole lot because most likely the airframe can be fixed with tape and hot glue, or you can build a new one for 10 bucks in an hour. So I really recommend you check this out if you're interested in uh, learning how to fly RC. And uh, if you like this plane, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'll be having more videos coming out soon.